Welcome back to East by West Farms, where we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. In this video, we're going to assemble the countertop. I've been working on the countertop for the last few weeks. It is just a few two by fours that are cut to size. The main emphasis is to make decent, not too complicated joinery so that all the load is distributed and, and, and um, carried by the wood and not the screws. Screw this together with decking screws. So pretty straightforward, simple, a simple design. Uh, I've got two parts of the countertop. One is a eight foot long counter. The other one is a uh, sink station with an opening for a sink. And as a special feature, we added a station for uh, compost. So what we're gonna do today is we're taking the framework. Yeah, that's relatively heavy. I don't have the countertop on yet. Putting it in place and then we get the countertop on. The countertop is going to be simple um, two by four dimension lumber from the home supply, home improvement supply store. Here's the cleaning station that gets arranged in an L shape to the uh, workstation. The sink comes in here, I've got some sturdy support that's all put in with shiplap joints. Down here on the bottom, I have some support. We uh, might be putting in some shelves or some drawers or something later on. The countertop is going to be right next to the walk station. First thing I need to do is level the ground a little bit so that um, the station is level and put some gravel in the, so in, the, in the ground so that you have the water flowing away from the wood. The last step is to put the top on the table frame. To do this, I'm using simple two by fours and screw them on to the frame. If I want to do this right, I would flatten and plane the boards out so that they have a good connection between each other and uh, glue them together. That is too much work, so I'll just take a little um, block plane and maybe a number four Stanley plane and roughen them in so that they are not too many, too big, so that there's not too much of a gap between the boards. So I marked out the center line from here. I uh, measured one and three quarters of an inch from each side uh, so that I have a two by four right here in the center. This is not too bad. We changed our plan. The reason is that so we've got our Workstation here, we've got the workstation here, we've got the sink over here and the compost bin over here. Now looking at that, it is just quite a bit of travel to go from cooking to preparing food. So what we decided is that we take the sink and put it over here. And I think that's what it was. Hey, honey. So the sink goes over here. Right, the sink goes over there. The compost can be here. Compost stays here, uh, okay. Or 
Or you can move to... Move it a little bit over there. Yeah. Look, the only thing I need to do is take that support out, move it over here, put a new support right here, take that support out, take that support out, and take that structure, put it over here, patch that up a little bit, move this over here, patch that up, and then I'm done. Now there are two cardinal rules in woodworking. Number one, measure twice, cut once. And number two, it's only a mistake if it can't get fixed. Now a little bit of wood glue and some elbow grease can fix most of the mistakes in woodworking. I finished changing the design, moved the sink from here to here, changed the support, made a new support for the compost bin. The compost bin goes right here. So we have a work area here. We will have the sink right here. We have a compost station here and then some place to have dinner or another work area right here. That of course makes things a little bit more difficult because I don't have a whole area here anymore that I can just put a two by four in. I need to cut the two by four. I need to cut out an opening for the, for the sink and I need to cut out an opening here for the compost bin. The other thing, I have different choices. I can start with the two by fours here and then build it up, which means I might end up at this side with a half a two by four. What I'm gonna do is I start in the middle and then build it up symmetrically from the left and the right. Makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more work, but um, I think that's, that's worth the extra effort.
It's raining. It's raining really hard. Perfect time to do some woodworking. The sink station is almost done. I put the top on. I've got a uh, compost bin, a round hole for the compost bin. That's, that's done. I've got the cutout for the, for the sink. The next step is to take the sink, drop it in, use the clips to clip it in from the bottom. I flattened out the surface here enough to get a decent uh, connection. Need to level out the bench a bit, uh, then put the plumbing in, put the faucet in, and a, dra a drain, a gray water container. I've been struggling with the sink for I don't even know how long now. These, these clips, they just don't stay on. And as soon as I drop the sink, they just pop off like that. And I've got 10, six, seven, and 10, 10 of these clips. Almost, it's, it's impossible to get them on. So we tried some silicone glue to glue them on. Now that didn't help, they popped right off, but then I looked in the box and uh, voila, we've got another set of clips. Now these clips should clip just in and stay on. And uh, I hope that's, the, I think that's the solution. It says top mount clips, we've got a top mount sink. It's actually a pretty nice sink, it's a 16 gauge stainless steel. But um, yeah, so these clips, they just, Pop in like that, and they should should all, should hold on to the should hold on to the sink just like they're supposed to. Okay, so that went all right, mostly. Using the right clips certainly helps. Now, the next thing that I need to do is install these, um, what shall I call them? I don't know, whatever they're called. And yeah, they go right in here and put that in. No, I don't have any plumber's putty. I should put some plumber's putty in between. The problem though is that we got this, this faucet. Nice little faucet. The problem here is that the faucet mounting screw is too large and hits the support of the, uh, of the sink right here. The next Thing that's going to happen is that we have a second opening on that sink and there is a soap bottle that I could install. Now the soap bottle, whoops, the soap bottle is pretty big too. Probably won't fit in here either. So I'm going to take that thing out again. I also want to put a bead of caulking or silicon glue here to seal that up a little. Need to do some woodwork right here, right here, and put it back in. All right. 
right, so few problems that I ran into. Uh, the clips are working fine now. The next thing is that I really need to seal up the uh, sink, the drain, and the uh, a seal around the rim of the, the sink. Usually you would use plumber's putty, and of course I don't have plumber's putty here. I've got some at home. We're not gonna run to Home Depot to get uh, plumber's putty now. I also need to level out the side a bit. That that's kind of bold, so I need to put some wedges underneath to get it up so that we have a good good contact. What we decided to do is that we're gonna mount the sink and the um, the the faucet and the soap dispenser and the outlets here temporarily. Uh, we mount them dry without putty. Put the sink in. I'm not gonna tighten tighten it down with the clips, so that at least we can start using it. And then we, when we get around to get the plumber's putty, uh, I'll take it back out, seal it up, drop it back in. We're gonna uh, collect uh, gray water. Uh, so we're gonna have a, a five gallon bucket or two five gallon buckets underneath to collect the, the gray water to watering the garden. Okay, it's done. What do you think? This is very nice. Oh, really? Just the look I, I wanted for outdoor kitchen. The two by four is very rustic looking, and then the uh, stainless steel appliances give it a good contrast. I think it's much better than I thought it will turn out. It's very nice. So originally we had the sink over there mm -hmm. and moved it over here and then it took away a lot of space from the surface here. Right. Is this still okay? I mean, do you I, think that's... Yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a good, um, it's a better arrangement. So when I'm cooking over here, so basically I can wash my stuff and put it over here and get ready for cooking. So when I'm cooked, cooking, I can just grab it and we have a small table over here. So I think this is a, um, a much better arrangement than, than the original when the sink is too far away. Good? Uh, yeah, we can just uh, put the tongue oil on the, tongue oil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think yeah. the tongue oil takes some time to dry, but once it's dry and the aged into it, it looks really nice. Yep. And eventually we'll, we'll flatten this out some time, a few times. Right. So when do we start cooking here? Um, depends on whenever we finish the plumbing. Okay, so the plumbing, we, we ran a big garden hose from yeah. the city <laughs> water to here. Mm -hmm. We're still missing an adapter. Right. It's not going to be hot water, it's cold water, mm -hmm. uh, at least for a while. Then we will have buckets underneath to catch gray water. Mm -hmm. And so that's just an adapter missing. Uh, right, and the, the drain, drain hose to hold the battery. Okay, and the yeah. little hose there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I hope you liked this content. If you did, give us a thumb up. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. 
If you want to follow our journey with the East by West Farm, please subscribe.